this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install Redux on top of an existing React app. So here I ran npm start to run my basic React app, which only displays one component that says how to add Redux to a React app. So the first thing you want to do to install Redux on your React app is exit out of your app and we're going to install Redux by typing npm space install Redux space react dash Redux dash dash save dash dev. So then just hit enter and wait for Redux to install. Now let's go to package.json file and if you scroll down you'll see here under dev dependencies we now have react dash redux and redux here 8.0 and 4.2 here i also have typescript from my previous installation and all of those types installed but in this tutorial we'll just focus on how to add a redux to your react app now let's go back to our react app and here where i have import use state use effect import use selector and use dispatch from react redux package now in the next part of this tutorial i'm going to show you a quick react redux example so i'm going to go to my terminal restart the app by typing npm start and so here we have our react app running again in the browser now with redux installed in our react app we're ready to create a reducer that will be used together with the Redux later on. Now, if you've never created a reducer before, it might not make a lot of sense, but just watch me type our first reducer for our React app in this tutorial, and it will make a lot more sense later. Now, I'm going to create a function with the const keyword and name it anything you want. In this case, I'm going to call it count reducer. We'll see why in just a moment with two arguments, state equals zero by default and the action argument. Now I'm going to open the brackets here. We're going to create the body of our reducer, which is based on a switch statement. This switch statement will track the value in our action argument and the type property on that action object. So based on what we have in that action type property, we're going to do different things. So for example, if it's equals increment, we'll return state plus one. And if action.type property for decreasing the value is going to have return state minus one. And for the switch statement, usually if there's no value provided, we provide our own default value, which is in this case, we'll just return the state object back from this reducer function. So this reducer we just created takes the state with the default value and on each action we do something with the state. But what's important to understand here is that we will return a new copy of the state, not the state that was passed. So after changing that state, we're returning a new state back this is generally important in React. When you change a state object, you always make a copy of it first and you never really make direct changes on the state object itself. If you try to do that, you're going to go against the rules of how React works. Now, just a quick explanation of this reducer that we just created. And it might not make a lot of sense why it's even called a reducer because all we're doing is adding a number. We're not even reducing anything. So why are these structures are even called reducers? Well, in this simple example, I'm just demonstrating the structure of a reducer in React. And all we're doing is just adding or subtracting a value from state. But in the real world scenario, you'll usually deal with much more complex objects. And all these different actions like increment and subtraction and all those things, they're not going to be simple actions. They're going to be things like getting user information or grabbing some piece of data from a database, something a lot more complex. And so basically reducer 
what this means is think about it more like a filter. So you have this one large state object and the reducer will filter it down to just the parts of that bigger object that is required or needed by this specific operation. And the whole point of a reducer is to modify the state object and return a modified copy so that this copy can be used as a replacement for the original state value. So from then on, when this state returns, it becomes that original value again. And the process can repeat over and over again. Now, the reason that we even installed Redux for our React app is that we want this huge state object available from all of our components. And in React Redux, that's called the store. So this store is basically this global state object. To get started with creating our global store object, we're going to import create store from Redux. And what you want to do is create a store object as a global object. Const store, usually you want to call it store, equals create store. And here, what you want to do is basically as its argument pass this reducer function we created earlier. Now, the next thing you want to do is import provider from React Redux. And because we're importing it from React and Redux, we can simply just add it here. Okay, so, and then you want to take this provider and go to your main app. And what you want to do is wrap your entire app return value with this provider as an object, as a component. So provider here, I'm gonna close it here. So here we wrapped it in our provider. And what you now want to do is, with this store, is you want to pass it to this provider. So here I'm just gonna type how to add provider to React app. Now, if you're working with React and Redux, you have to know what the containers are and how to create containers components in React. Containers are also called smart components. They are responsible for pulling state from Redux store, transforming it, as I've shown you with our reducer function, and passing it down to our regular components rendered in our main app component. So you're going to see how that works in just a moment. So the first thing we're going to do is create a container from our h1 tag. So I'm going to create a function, which will be our container component or smart component. I'm going to call it simply component. Just make sure to use uppercase letter first in the name equals. And we don't really need to use brackets. We can just go ahead and type this component here as the return value. And I'm going to rename this to how to create and connect a container component. And now here, I'm simply going to use that container by its name component and close. 
refresh the app. And now we're displaying this component, but we need to convert that to a container component. And we're going to connect our Redux store to this component. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another variable, const container equals. And what I need to now do is use the connect function, but we don't have that imported yet. So I'm going to go back here to our Redux, React Redux, and also add connect. So now I'm going to use this connect function here, connect. And what you want to do is create a second pair of parentheses and get your component name in there. So now this container is now going to go here in place of our component. And this is the smart container component that we've just created because it's connected to our React Redux store. Now, remember how we created the store and we passed the count reducer that we created as this reducer function and it has a state and the default value is zero. So we're going to take this state and we're going to map this state as a prop. So the way you do that is we're going to type here. We're going to create a new function called map state to props and state it's going to take state as one of its arguments and here inside the body of this function we're going to return a property called count inside an object and it's going to be state so remember how we assigned it here as zero and so that's what it's going to be using here. And what you now want to do is take this function and pass it into the connect. So now connect this function that we just created and the component name, which was this. So now we can use this mapped state property count in our smart component as a container here. And the way you want to do that is take this count and pass it in our component with brackets. And inside our component here, let's say count equals count. So all we're going to do is just pass this count and display it. As you can see, it's zero, and I'll demonstrate that it's in fact the state. If I change the default value of our reducer, it's going to change to that. So let's go back to zero. Okay, so that's how you connect your container component to your state with Redux. It's a little complex, but once you do this a couple of times, it gets easier and easier. Now guys, as if this wasn't complex enough, we still need to do one more step and that's connecting these actions to, let's say, a button in our component. So when we press a button, we want to execute one of these commands with increment or whatever we put in our double quotes, which is the name of that action. We want to create a button that when it's clicked, it executes one of these actions, updates the state, and it's reflected in our component here. So in order to do that, we're going to add something else to this connect function. And that is another function. I'm going to call it map dispatch to props. And it's going to take dispatch action, open brackets, return, and so we're basically now mapping dispatch actions to props in the same way we did map state to props. This is just a second required state to complete the round trip update for this entire data. And what you want to do is add a function. Let's say because we're here adding and subtracting a value, we're going to create two functions that take care of that. So 
add. And here we're going to use this dispatch. And this is the function that's going to execute one of these actions. Let's take this value. And what you want to do is pass it as a type. So this is the action. Remember the type property here. And for the second action here, I'm going to copy this and subtract. So we're going to name our second function subtract and, and type the name of that action here. And so with this created, what you want to do now is take this and also pass it to your connect function as a second argument. So now we have map state to props and map dispatch to props. Now let's go ahead and change our component. And we're going to wrap it in parentheses. We're going to add another parent container. And here I'm going to add a button add and another button subtract. So now in this component, after we pass the count, we now need to pass these functions and I'm going to say add and subtract. So these are the function names that come from here and I'm going to save this. And as you can see, we have buttons added and for the click handler for each of that button, we're going to say on click and this add button is going to get the add dispatch. And on this button equals subtract, which is the same value we imported here. So now clicking on this button will execute or dispatch this type of action. For the add, it's going to be type increment, subtract, decrement. And if I save this app now, we are all connected to our state. And if I click on the add button, you will see it's adding one number by executing this dispatch action. And by subtracting, we're executing this dispatch action type.